Creators of Ready or Not, Scream 5, and Scream 6, Radio Silence is back in theaters this week with a brand new creature feature, Abigail. And I'll tell you right now, this movie is just a bloody gore fest and one awesome time at the movies. If you are looking for an awesome creature feature that really much flips the script on certain things and doesn't just play into the serious horror tone and really much plays into the comedy of it all kind of very much in the same vein of what ready or not was able to do i am here to promise you that abigail is everything and more that you're probably going to want i had a couple nitpicks here and there but i'm very excited to talk about this brand new horror film today i definitely want to hear your guys thoughts down below in the comment section so leave your thoughts down there hit that like and subscribe button and without further ado let's talk about abigail because this is about a group of criminals who kidnap the ballerina a daughter of a powerful underworld figure they retreat to an isolated mansion unaware that they're locked inside with no normal little girl now the marketing the posters the trailers they have very much screamed what is going on with this little girl and i will say right now if you're one of the few people that does not know what's going on with this little girl i am going to say what type of creature she is i just want to give that warning there might be that one person on the space of the internet that does not know I'm going to talk about it because it's very hard to not talk about it, specifically because it's in literally all the marketing. So one, two, three, yeah. Abigail is a vampire and I really liked how Radio Silence actually played on the lore of it all. Very much felt like this is a vampire goodie bag and the way that Radio Silence kind of picked in, took a little bit of this lore, kind of twisted it a little bit here and oh, played around with it a little bit more here. And I overall thought that that's actually one of the better ideas that they had for something like this because... Honestly, like vampire films used to be something that we got quite a bit. Then Twilight hit and no shade towards Twilight. My my wife is like one of the biggest fans of that franchise, but you know, that came and gone and I felt like we didn't really have like anything vampire for like quite a while. And it seems like in the last couple of years we've started to really get back up on the ante of giving us vampire goodness we had the voyage film last year with dracula and then we have abigail this year we have a new ryan coogler and michael e jordan vampire supernatural action film coming out next year and it's kind of just great to be living in this era of it all but i'm getting off on a tangent to stick on to the topic of abigail and why i found this film to be awesome is because of how again it plays off the vampire lore it's familiar but at the same time it feels a little bit fresh and new and I really like because that's what Radio Silence delivered with Ready or Not and primarily as well with Scream 5 and Scream 6. Something that feels familiar but at the same time feels fresh and new. Very happy to see that they were able to do it all over again with something different and vampires are one of those things that as the older I get the more and more I appreciate like the lore of Dracula and other things into this creature feature. There's a lot that I definitely love that they played off of it on but to add into that as well you know the this film wouldn't really work without the actual star of the film. And that star is Alicia Weir, who plays Abigail in here. She is phenomenal. I know a lot of people were all obsessive over Megan last year. I, I personally wasn't, but Alicia is incredible in here. If you're looking for your next horror obsession, she is it. Like, I barely saw any of the trailers in this, but what I was really pleasantly surprised was to see that they gave Abigail a personality. She wasn't just this creepy little girl going around murdering people as a vampire. There was actually a little bit more to her, and specifically in her personality, in the way that she plays the character, in the way that they actually world build Abigail and where she comes from again playing back to the familiar tropes that we've seen and some of the newer fresher things they do they do a great job in the sense of building world building all inside this creepy Resident Evil Wesker-esque mansion shout out to that Th this mansion completely felt like it came out of a Resident Evil game back to Alicia I was really fascinated by the way that she played this character it wasn't again just the movements or how she did it it all comes down to her voice her presence when she is on screen and what she is able to deliver and i'm very happy that not just the script but herself gave a personality to something that could have came off very one-dimensional and it did not of course the rest of the crew is fantastic rest in peace angus cloud he's great i really liked matthew good in here giancarlo esposito very small role but always fantastic to see kevin durand i thought was awesome in here i thought he was just such a charming 
dumb, big muscle of this entire heist group. And speaking of that real fast, the heist element of this, because if you followed me for a while, I love heist stuff. That it was about a bunch of kidnappers, very much just their heist gone wrong. Going back to Kevin, he had a lot of fun moments in here. And that's like one of the things that I can say is that this is just fun. There's enough jump scares in here to get you smiling, get your adrenaline pumping. And at the same time, there's a lot of gore, action, thrilling aspects to it all that again just continue to keep you entertained and nice witted humor throughout it all and that really all comes down to this crew where like the rest of them if i'm looking at william Cadillac, who i thought was also great in here is rickles can't forget to talk about katherine newton because she was also great in here as well two people that i've been dying to talk about throughout this review is dan stevens who is just great and everything he does, he can flip a script and become a completely different character at any point in time in any movie. And it's great to see him and go from a crazy and fun character from Godzilla and Kong. Who of course, now in this film, you see him play this more serious, but over the top character and what they primarily do with his character goes wild and ballistic. And I Loved it. But Melissa Barrera, I think, solidifies herself as a top 10 horror actress icon of all time with this movie. That might be recency bias. You might be calling that maybe she's not in your top 10, but for me, she was. She's my favorite character in Scream 5. She was my favorite character in Scream 6, hands down. And in this, besides Alicia, because Abigail does so much in here, Joey is just her. Perfection. That same feeling I had watching Samara weaving in Ready or Not where I'm like instantly in love with her character. Melissa Barrera is the same way. And it's very hard to do that because her character in a sense is not a good person. And you start to learn a lot more about her and everyone else involved in this group. They're not great people. Really enough, Melissa Barrera, your top 10 horror icon of all time and I love that Abigail solidified that and I'm really happy that Radio Silence brought her back for this I could just continuously love to see them working together no matter what they do and I can't wait to see what she does next speaking about what I just mentioned with their characters and how they develop their characters that was actually something very unique this film could have easily just given us these characters where you just like them because of the personalities that they have and that's like an easy accessible way to get us into a horror film and then you could have gone the cheap way of giving us exposition with like two characters talking and sharing their story or having the group of characters sit around in a circle and be like yeah back in my day this is what i used to do oh yeah i'm new to the group and all this sorts of stuff no they do it in a very unique way where none of these people know each other but they're just kind of hanging out at one point and melissa barrera's character kind of has this essence and nuance that she can just read someone and know who they are and when she calls out one person they all agree and that person agrees as well and they keep going around in a circle and it's very unique that they were able to develop characters like that. It's not something you see too often but it's something that I have to appreciate. Last pro that I really have for this is just the murder, the kills, the gore, the horror elements of that and again that all flies back over to the vampire of it all. I loved what they were able to touch on and again play off into that mythology again and I really like how the gore escalates and gets gorier and gorier from each kill to each set piece all the way up until the third act which I just thought was absolutely glorious and I wish we would have actually gotten there a little bit sooner. And that's where I'm ready to talk about my issues with the film. Now I did finally go back and watch the trailer literally as reviewing this and that trailer spoils a lot. Now, even though the trailer did spoil a lot, the one thing that I actually think is very disappointing and actually holds the film back is the fact if you know Abigail is a vampire going into this movie. The reason I say that is because for about 25 to 30 minutes of the film's runtime, the entire first half, you're sitting there as an audience member knowing what Abigail is while these characters are trying to figure out what is going on in this house. And it just feels off because we know, and there's a couple kills that they like, hide because they're trying to hide that it's Abigail doing this all. I find that that was not the best thing to show. I wish they would have kind of done something that was like Barbarian, where Barbarian just said, there's something weird happening in this Airbnb, you better watch. And I think that would have maybe made Abigail a better viewing experience, specifically in suspense in that first half, because the whole time I'm just waiting for these characters and for that twist and turn to figure out for them that, yeah, uh, there's a vampire in your damn house and it's the little girl. It's the one thing that I think would have helped with the pacing in the first half and primarily maybe just the entire film then to play devil's advocate i do want to say at the same time 
Maybe I didn't know that. And I still watched the film and I find that it was a little bit slow. But how does it work on rewatches? Does it matter that I know that Abigail is a vampire? Does that ruin the first half? Not necessarily. I think it would have been nice to kind of just discover that and have that memory. But if I'm playing devil's advocate, I could see that bothering some people that maybe the first half is just genuinely slow and they played it a little bit too safe. And I find that when we get to the third act, there's a lot of interesting aspects and world building that happens in that last act that I actually wish we would have gone to a little bit sooner. There's a little bit of a repetitive nature throughout the movie where it's like, oh, Abigail disappears and they're trying to do the next thing to move forward. And they always add like something new in those moments, but it wasn't enough to keep the pacing fresh. And I guess that is the only big con I have, whether it is from the first half or whether the marketing had ruined the surprise of what Abigail is. And maybe that hurt the pacing. There's just a couple things here and there where I was like, okay, like let's move it on. I will say when we get to the third act, as messy as it can be bloody gory and specifically in story, I, I fucking loved it. I thought it was so much fun and I was happy to see where it ended up going. I think that's where it's like safe to say that like Abigail the movie is just a gore fest. It's an adrenaline rush of vampire goodness that lets radio science silence flip the vampire genre and lore in a new and familiar way. One that will very much please many. Melissa Barrera continues to solidify herself as a horror icon and Alicia Weir deserves all the love. I overall really liked this movie. I thought it was a completely entertaining horror movie and one that like again, plays into a genre that I was very happy to see. For me, couple nitpicks here and there, whether it's with the pacing, whether it's with the marketing, I think there's a couple things to all be there. I feel like my feelings on those nitpicks will either grow or dwindle when I get to see this film again, but it is one of those few films that I came home and I was like, man, I want to show my wife this movie. And she's one of those people that I'm excited to take to the movies again and go and see Abigail this week in theaters. So make sure to leave your thoughts down below. And with all that said, I'm going to give Abigail a B. Thank you so much again, guys, for watching this. Again, hit that like and subscribe button. Leave your thoughts down there. What's your favorite vampire movie? What's your favorite Radio Silence film? I've been watching these guys back from the Chad, Matt, and Rob YouTube channel when they made a scary alien short that scared the shit out of me. But it was a lot of fun. And, uh, yeah, I'm very happy to see where they keep going, and I can't wait to see what they do after Abigail as well. So, again, leave your thoughts down below. And, of course, until next time, stay classy. Stay classy.